but the White House has started its briefing. Let's listen to Jake Sullivan. It occurred earlier today. I can take just a few questions because this is an ongoing situation and I need to get back to my desk. Today, Iran launched nearly 200 ballistic missiles towards targets in Israel. The United States military coordinated closely with the Israeli Defense Forces to help defend Israel against this attack. U.S. naval destroyers joined Israeli air defense units in firing interceptors to shoot down inbound missiles. President Biden and Vice President Harris monitored the attack and the response from the White House Situation Room, joined in person and remotely by their national security team. We are still working with the IDF and the authorities in Israel to assess the impact of the attack. But at this time, and I stress at this time, we do not know of any deaths in Israel. We are tracking the reported death of a Palestinian civilian in Jericho in the West Bank. We do not know of any damage to aircraft or strategic military assets in Israel. In short, based on what we know at this point, this attack appears to have been defeated and ineffective. This was first and foremost the result of the professionalism of the IDF, but in no small part because of the skilled work of the U.S. military and meticulous joint planning in anticipation of the attack. We are also aware of reports of a terrorist attack in Jaffa that took the lives of a number of Israeli civilians and wounded several others today. Our condolences go out to the families of the victims and to the family of the Palestinian civilian in Jericho. Obviously, my update here is based on early reports, and we reserve the right to amend and adjust as necessary as we gather more information. The word fog of war was invented for a situation like this. This is a fluid situation. We will consult with the Israelis on next steps in terms of the response and uh, how to deal with what Iran has just done, and we will continue to monitor for further threats and attacks from Iran and its proxies. We are particularly focused on protecting U.S. service members in the region. And with that, I'll take just a few questions. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. Uh, is the administration making any preparations to evacuate U.S. citizens from Lebanon or elsewhere in the region? We have been very clear for some time now uh, that U.S. citizens should avail themselves of commercial means to depart Lebanon, given everything that's going on. We have said that from this podium, from multiple podiums, we continue to say that, but we have not uh, begun triggering a non-combatant emergency evacuation, a NEO, um, and do not have an intention to do so at this time. If that changes, we'll let you know. But we continue to reinforce the point. American citizens in Lebanon should follow the guidance from the State Department, which is uh, to find civil, uh, civilian commercial means to depart, because in extremis, we may not be able uh, to get them out safely. Yes. Thanks, Jake. Uh, what is the U.S. view on whether Israel should retaliate, and what is your concern about this leading to a wider escalation of war in the region? We've had some initial discussions with the Israelis in the aftermath of this at the military level and also at the White House to Prime Minister's office level. We'll continue those conversations in the hours ahead. I'm not going to prejudge or get ahead of anything. We want to have some deep consultations with the Israelis, and I'll have more to report to you after we get the opportunity for deeper discussions. And escalation yeah. in the region? Obviously, this is a significant escalation by Iran, a significant event. And it is equally significant that we were able to step up with, with Israel and create a situation in which uh, no one was killed in this attack in Israel, so far as we know at this time. We are now going to look at what the appropriate next steps are to secure, first and foremost, American interests, and then to promote stability to the maximum extent possible as we go forward. Yeah. Back in April, the President's message message to Israel was to take the win when the U.S. and Israel were able to intercept the barrage of Iranian missiles. Is he recommending a similarly limited response this time? I will not, from this podium, uh, share the president's recommendations. Uh, he will have the opportunity to share them directly. We're going to have, as I said, ongoing consultations with the Israelis this afternoon, this evening. It is too early for me to tell you anything publicly in terms of our assessment or in terms of uh, what our expectations are of the Israelis or the advice that we will give them. So will he be speaking to Prime Minister Netanyahu today? I don't have anything to announce from this podium, but I can tell you that he is tracking this minute by minute. We are very much deeply in touch with the Israelis, and insofar as we have calls to read out, we'll make sure to read them out with you. Just last question, then I'll turn it over. Thank you, Jake. In April, after Iran struck Israel, uh, the is U.S. issued a number of sanctions um, as a consequence. 
This morning, the president said there would be severe consequences if Iran carried out this attack. What are those consequences, and are they more severe than sanctions? Totally legitimate question, and that answer will come based on the conversations and consultations we have with our Israeli counterparts. It's too soon for me to stand before you today and give you an answer. What I can tell you is this. Uh, we are proud of the actions that we've taken alongside Israel to, to protect and defend Israel. We have made clear that there will be consequences, severe consequences for this attack, and we will work with Israel to make that the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Okay. On to the rest of, rest of the programming here. Uh, this morning, President Biden was briefed by his Homeland Security Advisor, Liz Sherwood Randall on the latest impacts of Hurricane Helene, and this afternoon he will receive an interagency inter briefing on the Hurricane Helene response and recovery efforts. At the President's direction, the Biden-Harris administration continues to use every tool available to get assistance and resources to the communities that need them the most. Yesterday, the President approved a major disaster declaration for Georgia, which will unlock additional assistance to help those recovering, this is in addition to the major disaster declaration swiftly approved by the president following requests from North Carolina, South Carolina, and Florida, as well as requests for emergency assistance across seven states. Tomorrow, the president will travel to Raleigh, North Carolina, where he will visit the state emergency operations center to meet with local officials and also first responders. And the vice president will travel to Augusta, Georgia tomorrow, and will then head to North Carolina in the coming days. As of today, thousands of personnel from across the federal workforce are deployed in supporting state-led Hurricane Helene response efforts across the six affected states, including over 1,200 personnel in North Carolina. Still, there is more work to be done, and the Biden-Harris administration will be there for these communities every step of the way. Now, as you can see, we also have Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. Thank you, Corinne, and uh, good afternoon. All right, we're pulling away from the White House press briefing. Corinne Jean-Pierre uh, updating us on the recovery efforts after Hurricane Helene and the storm ravaged a large part of the South in the U.S. And before that, we heard National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan give the latest information on Iran's attack against Israel. Sam Vinograd is still with us and was uh, speaking about um, kind of the, the national security perspective on all of this. I'm wondering, Sam, you've got some new reporting to share with us um, and also your response to what uh, Mr. Sullivan did and did not say. Well, Mr. Sullivan did make uh, some important comments about Iran's intentions here. And based on conversations I've had as well, I think we have learned that Iran was trying to impact damage here. Mr. Sullivan called this, I believe, the largest and most violent missile attack by Iran against Israel. And uh, my sources have been sharing that Iran did intend to create significant damage against Israel, but they failed. Why did they fail? Because the United States and Israel together instituted a multi-layered air defense system that prevented almost 200 Iranian missiles from causing damage. Now, Mr. Sullivan did provide a note of caution and so said that there's still assessments underway, but at this time, it does appear that those 200 missiles did not lead to any fatalities, which is incredible to think about. But as we take a step back and think about what's next, Ariel, where does this go? It does appear that Iran was not necessarily looking for an off-ramp. They were not necessarily looking to stop uh, the escalation in this conflict. And that's an important data point. As we think about what Israel's response might be, last time after Iran uh, launched pro aerial projectiles at Israel, Israel struck near to a nuclear facility in Iran. This time Iran, around, Israel may feel pressured to take bolder action based upon Iran's actions today, as well as Iran's ongoing support for terrorist groups like Hezbollah, Hamas, and others, Errol. Well, Sam, I want to connect that with something you mentioned before the White House press, press briefing that stood out to me, in which you had said the U.S. was communicating to the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, that finding some type of resolution with Hamas, finding some type of off-ramp with Hezbollah is the preferred option. And it appeared, based on what you were saying, that the Israeli Prime Minister was not listening, considering this was the largest, most violent attack against Israel. And it, it seems, based on this early information, that there were no fatalities, partly because of U.S. help. 
Does that change the calculation? Is Netanyahu encouraged at all now to listen to the U.S. more? Well, I think at the end of the, the day, the United States has dual objectives here. In the first instance, the United States has the, a strong objective to ensure that Israel has both the right and the ability to defend itself. The administration has been crystal clear on that. At the same time, the administration has assessed that a ceasefire and hostage release deal for Hamas, along with humani uh, allowing humanitarian aid in, as well as a ceasefire in Lebanon, would be in the best interests of Israel's security in the near term, as well as uh, American and broader geopolitical dynamics around the world. So for that reason, the United States has been urging diplomacy rather than uh, military action by Israel. But we should make no mistake that the president has been quite clear that Israel does have a right to defend itself. And after Israel suffered yet another uh, attack by Iran today, I think Mr. Sullivan hedged when it came to what should the Israeli response be. He said, we'll engage in consultations and Iran will be punished. He did not say Israel should, uh, you know, to quote uh, another U.S. official, take the win and take a step back. He said there would be ongoing consultations, Errol. Sam Vinograd joining us from our Washington bureau. We really appreciate that up-to-the-minute information you're providing with us.